What's up? Long time no see. For those of you that watch live, you'll know that we've taken a little bit longer break than normally. First of all, all those of you that watch right as the episodes come out, thank you so much for doing that. That supports the channel a whole heap of a lot. Uh, second of all, that is because the last episode that we filmed, there is a data corruption issue, and I'm working on retrieving as many of those files as we can. If not, I will just kick out the episode with whatever is left over. Uh, so yeah, I'm working on it, and uh, there has been some work done to this car that you're not going to notice, and it'll be it'll be released soon. Fun stuff. Okay, we got like 15 days to finish this car. I have a set timeline that I'm trying to go racing, and um, things are in the mix, and I think we can do it. But it's really time to put the hammer down. So we're going to start today with something that we absolutely don't need to do, but I really, really want to, which is window louvers. We built our first set of window louvers ever actually on this car. Then I decided I didn't really like the look of the window louvers with the look of this car. And then now that we're changing the look of the car, I want window louvers again. So this is DIY, how to build your own window louvers. They cost 800 bucks if you buy them from whatever aftermarket company makes them for this car. And we're gonna make them for more like 80 bucks. Actually, I think the supplies were like uh, $35. Yeah, I just bought the supplies. They're $35. Add in a little bit of paint, add in 10 bucks for paint. You got $45 DIY window louvers. They look great. I built a pair for the plan B and they still hold up and they do amazing. So it's time to build some window louvers. Stay tuned. Right, window louvers one of the first things that you're gonna to want to do no actually the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is clean up your rear window once you put your rear uh, your window louvers on the car you can't get back down in there to clean the glass anymore so clean up this glass like it's the last chance you're gonna get and uh, then also if you care about your paint now we're gonna be messing with this paint later on so don't worry I'm not gonna worry about it but if you care about your paint I would tape up all the edges Maybe even put some like protective cardboard over it and then tape over that. But if not, like some painter's tape, I don't know. Protect your paint because you're gonna be flailing with a lot of metal around here. So, clean and protect. So if you're as lucky as me, I have my girlfriend to help me. This is a really good two-person job, by the way, so uh, make a friend. Anyways, um, next step is going to be the side railing. So you're gonna have a side railing that runs from here to here, and likewise from here to here. Um, if you have a, like, a bend in your, um, if, if, your, if your rear window glass is shaped like this one, just give up on the top inches around here. It's gonna be nearly impossible to get your side railing to bend up. Most window louvers don't make it quite up to the top anyways. So I found it's best to just start right here, make essentially a 90 from the very top where your uh, window hits, hits the top of your roof. Where your window meets your roof is where you should give it a break. So uh, you need to build a railing and if you wanna bend along this line, that is gonna be best. And this railing is very important because it holds in all the slots of metal as well as it holds your window louvers like firmly onto your window. The way I do this is with three quarter inch aluminum angle. Normally I call it angle iron, but it's angle aluminum. So I'll bust these out real quick. I'm gonna make them up and then I'll show you guys kind of how we do it and why we're making them. First railing is done, and this is kind of how it'll look when it's on the car. Uh, and let me kind of explain what I did there. So I started with a piece of um, aluminum angle like this. And what we're really looking to get is a piece of metal that has that nice channel inside it that we can slide the uh, steel slats of our window louvers into. Now, if you know somewhere where you can buy something like this, then perfect, good for you. Uh, definitely do that and take advantage of it because this isn't super fun to make. But uh, if you don't, which I couldn't find anywhere to buy metal like this, like with a slat inside it. Um, so I started with aluminum angle because it's something that you can kind of pinch together. Uh, measured the bend um, all the way down through here. And then also measured to leave a little bit hanging into your trunk. If you have a trunk lid that you can go inside of, this will be a little bit of added safety down the road that I can show you. So anyways, 
pinch it together so you get this nice channel. Uh, bend it to, to roll along the, because uh, you can see there's a bend in the window, so you're gonna do a bend in it going down. And then you also cut a little bit of relief and um, then bend it to match the line of your, uh, of your window. So that's it, this is a very key piece. You need to build one for each side and then you could start on the slats and you're not far from home base. So uh, my left side's done, I'm gonna go ahead and build the right. So we got both our railings right here, and uh, next it's time to start bending the pieces of metal for your slats. So, oh, let me go grab one of those as an example. Okay, I grabbed all of them. Uh, these are 20 gauge, uh, four and a half inch uh, wide pieces of um, steel. I use steel because it'll stay more rigid. You could go with aluminum if you wanted to maybe put a support down the middle, but if you don't wanna have to do that, I, uh, I go with steel. And uh, what else do I need to tell you about them? Uh, you need to get them as wide as you need for whatever size rear window you have. If you're doing a minivan and it's very large, you're gonna need bigger ones. Um, four and a half inches wide, I think is a really good look. And 20 gauge is as stiff as you need it. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we need to mark off where we wanna start bending these. So we'll put a bend in it and we're gonna follow that same line with each one. And that's how it's all, they're all kinda gonna line up the same way and you're gonna get a uniform pattern. The way I look at it and the way I've measured it, I think it is five and a half inches off of the railing. So we're basically gonna measure it from the top and the bottom, five and a half inches off of the railing, and then we're gonna make two lines, and that's where we're gonna put our bends and our metal. And then we're gonna go ahead and bend up a demo one and see how it looks. Um, buy extra, but definitely. First time I bought about twice as many as I needed. Uh, this stuff, like I said, was pretty cheap, 35 bucks for all the materials. So um, this time I bought two extra. So I'm gonna bend up one, and if it's garbage, we'll do it right the next time. All right, first one was a fail. Uh, we mixed up a measurement and instead of measuring and then going out from there, we measured and we went in from there and we, we basically built it front to back. That's the British way of saying backwards. So uh, we're gonna make another one. We can't mess up the next one. Wait, we can mess up the next one, then we can't mess up anymore. Our first piece is complete. We, you know, we made one mistake, but then we get, we got it figured out, and we made it two modifications. Don't be afraid to cut these side rails twice or three times. Uh, don't cut your finger like I did, um, but uh, yeah. So cut these side rails out as much as you need to. The when I say side rails, don't cut the actual rail. Cut more, shave more off of this piece until it fits in there correctly and snug, and you get a good look. So this is our first piece. Looks good uh, on this car using four and three quarter inch. Um, size slats, you need five of them. So we're gonna go ahead now and cut four more. And it's pretty simple, you just follow the same steps we did before. You measure your outside rail to your outside rail, that'll get this nice clean line of all these bends are basically gonna start following down this railing. Here we go. All right, hard part is done. These came out amazing. Uh, I'm so glad I had a second set of hands. Chelsea is here to help me, and we really were able to take our time and do this right. So it's all about patience. If you see one that's like a little out of line, slide it back out, trim it up, put it back in, and see if you can do it better. So these are the best ones I've ever made. They're super, super snug. Everything is like a really, really tight fit. You might have seen me using a hammer. I actually hammered things to like slide them to touch each other, uh, but you know, coming it's just it really turned out great so the next thing you got to do is uh you're, you're drilling your holes for the final installation um well not final installation whatever you're drilling your holes to be able to mount these to your car as well as you're going to drill some holes to rivet uh the the outer like the railing into your slats so um what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to probably do 
maybe one or two holes. These slats are really, really in there, so I don't want to overkill it, but it'll probably be two holes for each slat. And then at the top, I'm going to drill one large hole for the mounting bracket. And then at the bottom that's hidden right now by the trunk, we're going to drill one large hole as well for the backup safety security mounting uh, to mount that in there. So yes, lots of drilling. Don't drill into your window. Have fun. One side done. I could have evenly measured out all of these, but I just I just didn't really feel like it. I don't know. I didn't want to have to work around these different things, so I just kind of eyed it up and went for where I felt like they should go. I went with two in each one in case one of them maybe missed the metals. They didn't slot in deep enough or something like that. The second one will get it. But also just the pinching motion that these have that's going to squeeze the two pieces of aluminum together, that's going to help keep those in there as well. So uh, another thing though to mention is if your build is a little bit more loose than mine was, um, my first few were a little bit more loose, always keep these, this thing level. You can see why I have these rubber blocks here. It's keeping it level on the car because uh, if, if this side is like sagging down and then you're working on that side, what you'll do is you'll rivet all these in and they'll be all kind of slightly cocked to the side and you want them all perfectly straight. So now we're gonna move on to this side and rivet up this side. Alright, second railing is done and the installation holes have been drilled as well as the safety holes. Let me show you safety holes. So, um, also I installed the floorboard in my trunk. Getting things done. Alright, so safety holes are these things right here. They tuck underneath your trunk lid when, you're, uh, when your trunk is closed. What you do is drill a hole here and run either a chain or a metal zip tie or a really strong zip tie and go from there to there. That hole right there. It's that simple. When you close your trunk, you'll never be able to see any of this stuff. But what it will ensure is for sure, like this is gonna stay tucked underneath this. So for these things to come off of your vehicle, they would have to come up, that thing would have to bend or whatever. But then if they did start flapping around in the wind and started to catch wind and they, they won't be able to fly off because they'll be attached to your car in two spots, one there and one on the other side, that will ensure that they do not fly off. Now I have gone, you know, very fast in my other car and I've never had them start to freak out, but I've, I imagine that they would start flapping and they'd probably give you a good warning. But anyways, that's a good safety way to do it. Now, let's talk about mounting these. How do you mount them up? Well, you drill a hole, nice big hole right there and right there. And then you need some fancy mounting hardware. Let me show you. This is the fancy mounting hardware. Now it's actually not that fancy at all. This is what Willpack provides with their window louvers and this is what I had kind of like emulated before but never done a good enough job. So I figured let's just use these ones. I had a whole package of these laying around. Uh, so what these are is a piece of metal with a screw coming out of it and double-sided 3M tape on the back side. And this is like your first go-to point of mounting. So what you do is you slide this underneath here. Um, you mount it to your, wind, uh, your rear window wherever it needs to go. You feed that screw through there and you screw it down. And that's it. Now, you could call Willpack. Uh, it's a company that makes window louvers. They may sell you a kit like this. They may not because you didn't buy window louvers from them. You could ask a handy dandy friend to weld a screw onto a piece of metal or you could just take a flat headed screw and kind of just try and flush mount it on a piece of metal and put some tape over the back side of it, maybe sand the back side of it down. You could do a screw and a really thin nut and then another nut on top. You know, you guys can build your own one of these. It's not that hard, but I'm gonna use the wheel pack ones. Now we're not gonna do the final mounting of these right now because I have to take them off to paint them. One note about painting, by the way. When you buy metal from metal warehouses and stuff like that, it normally comes with a thin coating of oil on it, almost always. Uh, so these are gonna be basically covered in oil. You're gonna need to clean, degrease, wax prep, all these things like five times to clean them up. It's gonna be a total pain, but it's worth it. So, went over mounting, kind of. I didn't go all the way. So what you'll do is you'll do a thing like this and you'll go like that. Trim the top of that off and that'll hold it down right there. All along the side railing, use 3M waterproof double-sided tape, the strongest one you can buy. I like 3M or, strangely enough, I like to use Harbor Freight. Those two companies, uh, double-sided tape, I've had really good luck with. I think what's on the Plan B is still 
um, Harbor Freight and I've never had a problem with it. So that will mount these things up really nicely. The other thing that you can do after you paint these guys is throw a little bit of weather stripping on the inside top. This part right here where it's touching your car. Now mine don't rattle at all, they never really have, but they might. And if you put that weather stripping stuff in there, they definitely will not. So that's pretty good too. Oh, let me show you what they look like from inside the car. A lot of people are wondering, well, you're gonna block all your vision. Nuh-uh, let me show you. So from inside the back seat, it does look like you're blocking all the vision, but let me show you the rear view mirror shot. Well, I didn't plan this out very well. The camera is not doing it justice, but you can kind of see the tripod through there. That's what's actually behind us. So it blocks like tiny little strips, but overall you can totally see what's behind you. So that's how you make them. That's kind of how you mount them. You guys get the idea how you mount them on there. You sticker them on there, stick them on there real good. And painting them, well, I will show you that in another episode coming up very shortly, but it's basically clean it up and paint it like you paint anything else. And that's how you build yourself your own set of badass window louvers for 35 bucks, normally cost about $800. And I honestly think these ones with this more aggressive angling and stuff like that, I think they look better than the other ones that have a lot, a lot of vents in them. I like them like this. They look good. All right, guys, well, that is a wrap on window louvers. It's a very fun, you know, kind of like one day project to get them basically built. Might take another day to get them painted and mounted and stuff like that. But I hope some of you guys follow along. If you do, back when I did this a while ago, a lot of people, sorry, there's a lot of bugs in here. Summer has came to Oregon. Um, a lot of people uh, sent awesome pictures to me on Instagram and, and, and tagged me in pictures of their progress making their own. And that was really cool. So please do that. If anybody follows along with this, please share, share on Instagram. Tag me in them. I love watching progress of of that stuff or any builds that maybe you feel like sharing. I would love to see it, so throw me a ta uh, tag me in that stuff. Um, one thing I should mention is, well, like I, like I said before, I'm very sorry that it took so long for this episode to come out. Um, and uh, we got another one in the can that I'm working on processing that footage. And also it's just gonna start, things are gonna start moving a little bit faster because that deadline is right around the corner and I gotta get this car finished. I did wanna say though that Window louvers, this was just like, this car, this build is, is not anymore about what I think looks good. It's not really just like what I think would be cool. It's just what I want. Like this is, I'm kind of going off the path now. I normally build cars a mixture of what I think is cool and what I think looks good, but I don't always do what I want. Sometimes I want candy apple red wheels and window louvers and just nutty stuff. And I don't always build it. That's what this build is about. So I had to have window louvers on this build because it's like the, one of the first things I ever built that was just like, those are a little bit out there and I want those. So now I have them. Um, hey, I also wanted to mention the tuner crates are coming out now. I got my tuner crate. This is our collaboration with tuner crate and there is so much good stuff in here. This is like, I'm not trying to really sell you guys on anything. This is awesome. This is the plan B BRZ shirt right here. Um, there is a, a shirt for the Aston Martin as well and a shirt for the Mustang and then our BS for build collab shirt. There are so many good shirts in the premium crate. You get like, is that four shirts? One, two, three. You get four shirts. You get, you guys will not believe this. Hang on. Awesome socks that say, uh, I think they say clutch and gas on them. And, um, okay, I can't find it. There's some awesome stickers in there. There's some BS for Build stickers in there. But there is an Evora car air freshener. I want 500 of those personally for myself. That is so cool. And the design on there is really cool. The artists over at Tuner Crate are amazing at what they do. They made some really, really good graphical renderings of the builds that you've seen me build on this show. So uh, I'm really proud of that, even though I, you know, I, I didn't make them. I guess I'm proud of the build and, I, and I'm proud to be doing a collaboration with these guys that represented the cars in such a honestly very, very cool way. So. Uh, I'm super amped on it, as you can tell. Um, so if you want to, if you want to pick up a, yourself a tuner crate, there is a link in the description. Uh, that is affiliate link, so it helps out BS for Build when you if you buy a tuner crate uh, through that link. Uh, but if not, I don't care. I still think that this was really, really cool. Also, if you want to save yourself some money, 20% uh, off with the code Build20. I like tuner crate. I subscribed a while back when we did ads for them a while back, but uh, this one I'm really proud of and. Sales pitch or not, I think it's freaking awesome. And to get, and the price, the price is right because you get four shirts way, way cheaper than I sell them. So I might have to do more collaboration stuff. I'm thinking about having them design our next shirt, but I'm not, I'm not really sure uh, how that's going to go yet. So, anyways, the tuner crate is out. I'm super amped on it. And now that I've kind of unboxed it and showed you guys, now I can start wearing all the stuff. I wanted to wear the socks, but I can't show you guys worn socks. 
I'm really talking a lot. Okay, cool. So there's going to be another episode out very, very shortly after this one, and then they're going to continue pretty rapidly until I road trip this car down to California. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the show and you want to help out and support in other ways than buying a tuna crate, head over to our shop at bsforbuild.com. Uh, yeah, it's, it's there. Um, scroll down, you'll find all our merchandise, all our products. All those are designed by me, managed by me, packaged by me, all that good stuff. And uh, all the proceeds of that go directly towards supporting these builds. Um, and also, uh, if you want to find us in more places, we're at Beast for Build on Instagram, which I just mentioned earlier, and uh, Twitter and Facebook and all that good stuff. So check us out there. And uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Feels good to be back. Peace!